Today, we cover the Nifal stem. What is Nifal? This is the passive voice. This is the counterpart to the cal stem. If the cal is active voice, the Nifal is passive voice. The key diagnostic markers of the Nifal are in the name. The name is Nifal. It begins with an N, I, and then it finishes with an A before the L. N-I-A, N-I-A, Nifal. When we look at Hebrew, you will notice Nifal adds a prefix, Nun, Hirik. And then the, the stem vowel will be Pathak A class. Now we're speaking in broad generalities and this is unique and specific to the perfect conjugation. It also applies to participles and it might apply to infinitive absolutes. However, outside of the perfect, the Pathak A class stem vowel might not be there, it might be changed. So we'll dive into this further, but generally speaking, what we're talking about with the Nifal is a noon prefix with the Hiric added on. And so it doesn't matter if it's perfect, imperfect, a participle, imperative, infinitive, we're adding passive voice to the translation by virtue of the Nifal stem. So if Katal means he killed, right? That's Cal, perfect, from Katal, third masculine singular, he killed. Then the Nifal is Niktal, which means he was killed. This is third masculine singular. Nifal, perfect, from Katal, he was killed. So... We mentioned this last lesson, passive voice means receiving the action. Receiving the action. So, in this case, third person masculine, a man of some sort, is receiving the action, and this action is kill. So when, when you want to translate as a passive voice, you're going to probably use some form of to be, in uh, the past tense, he was killed. Now this would be for perfect. If it were imperfect, then he will be killed. We're still using to be. Or he is being killed. So that one uses to be plus the participle being. Or you could say it's a gerund, whatever. I say participle. So that's the long and short of the Nifal. Let's look at it in more detail. So oftentimes, whatever you have in the cal stem, the Nifal makes that cal equivalent, passive, or reflexive. There are times where the verb does not exist in the cal stem, and so it has unique Nifal meaning, and that's where knowing your vocabulary is super important, or being able to look it up in a lexicon. So looking at Nifal in the perfect, we have Niktal, he was killed, third masculine singular. Niktala, she was killed, third feminine singular. Niktalta, you were killed, second masculine singular. Niktalt, you were killed, second feminine singular. Niktalti, I was killed, first common singular. Niktalu, they were killed, third common plural. Niktaltem, 
Second masculine plural, you were killed. Niktal ten, you were killed. Second feminine plural. Niktalnu, we were killed. First common plural. So, as you can see, the noon prefix is really crucial, and it has the hyric consistently. And then we also see commonly the pathak stem vowel. It's not always present, but it's consistent. For the imperfect, which already bears a prefix, the noon will actually assimilate and become a dagesh forte in the first letter of the verbal root. We'll talk about weak verbs later and how it works with those, but for now, with strong verbs, you'll see the dagesh. So for the imperfect, we have yikatel, he will be killed, third masculine singular. Tikatel, she will be killed, third feminine singular. Tikatel, second masculine singular, you will be killed. Tikatli, you will be killed, second feminine singular. Ekatel, I will be killed, first common singular. Ikatlu, they will be killed, third masculine plural. Tikatalna, they will be killed, third feminine plural. Tikatlu, you will be killed, second masculine plural. Tikatalna, second feminine plural, you will be killed. Nikatel, we will be killed, first common plural. So again, we see the noon with a hyric, except the noon assimilates into a dogesh and moves into the first consonant of our verbal root. The hyric is consistent, the dogesh is consistent. We have a comet under the second consonant. The comet is an A-class vowel. So instead of a pathak as the stem vowel, we get a comet under the second consonant. Both are A-class. Now, it needs to be said, notice the difference in the first common plural between the imperfect cal and imperfect nifal. Cal is niktol. Nifal, nikatel. The difference is especially seen with the dogesh. Plus, we don't have a holum. And as you can see, some of the other pointings are different. So just don't confuse the two. You need to make sure you understand the difference. Understand your diagnostic markers. This is very important. The other thing you'll notice, we've already seen the perfect, we've already seen the imperfect. The prefixes don't change. The suffixes don't change. What changes is this nifal business, right? With the noon uh, and maybe the path act, for example, right? The A-class vowel. But otherwise, what comes after the verb, what comes before the verb in terms of diagnostic markers of our conjugations does not change. Those are consistent. Now, when it comes to the imperative, we are going to have to add to what we had from the cal stem because the cal stem was very brief and short, right? It had no prefix. It did have suffixes, but no prefix. So the nithal instead of a noon, it adds hey. Then the noon assimilates into the first consonant. Then under the first consonant, we have our A-class vowel, comets. So we have hikatel, second masculine singular, be killed. Hikatli, second feminine singular, be killed. Hikatlu, second masculine plural, be killed. Hikatalna, be killed, second feminine plural. When it comes to infinitive construct, it follows suit with the imperative, adding a prefix he plus the dogesh assimilated noon. And then we have the, the, the hyric under the he, and we have the comets under the first consonant of the verbal root. 
So it looks identical to the second masculine singular imperative. This is similar to what we saw in the cal stem. So context is key. So the infinitive construct is hikatel. The infinitive absolute follows suit with the cal by including the holom vav stem vowel, but it can take one of two forms. One form will be the noon, hiric at the front. The other will be the hey, hiric with a noon assimilated as a dagesh in the first verbal root consonant. And in this case, if we have the assimilated noon, we will also have the comets underneath that consonant. So the first form is niktol. The second form is hikatol. Just as we saw in the cal stem, we can have defective spelling. So the holom vav can change to a holom. But there's another variation where the nifal will retain a tsere instead of a holom or a holom vav, in which case it will look identical to the infinitive construct and second masculine singular imperative. Context will be key. When it comes to the nifal participle, we will add the noon here to the beginning and the vowels can be a little different, but for the most part, we've got a class vowel. We have niktal being killed, masculine singular. Nikteleth being killed, feminine singular. Niktalim being killed, masculine plural. Niktaloth, being killed, feminine plural. Note the difference between the nifal perfect, third masculine singular, and nifal participle, masculine singular. Perfect third masculine singular is niktal with a pathak. Masculine singular nifal participle is niktal with a comets. The only difference here is the stem vowel. So when it comes to the participle, there is no pathak. Keep that in mind. If you see a pathak, you know it's going to be perfect. The perfect pathak. Oh, goody. Now, when it comes to weak verbs, we're still going to see our diagnostic features pretty consistently. In the perfect, we're going to have the noon heric plus an A class stem vowel. We're going to see in the imperfect the noon assimilation as a dogish forte in the first verbal root consonant. We're going to see the heric underneath our imperfect prefixes, and we're going to see a comet underneath the first verbal root consonant. This will be consistent. In the imperative, we'll see the hey heric plus the dogesh plus the comets. In the infinitive construct, we will see the hey heric plus the dogesh plus the comets. In the infinitive absolute, we will see the noon heric plus Holom vav. In the participle, we will see the noon heric plus the comets, the comets being the stem vowel. No surprises here. It's very consistent. This is with third aleph. With third hey, it will very consistently use the noon heric. But then instead of the stem vowel being a pathak, we're gonna see some variations uh, where it could be a comets plus a hey, right? Or we could see a tsere yod. And so the yod becomes kind of that telltale sign we're dealing with a third hey. That's in the, the, in the perfect. In the imperfect, we're gonna see the heric the, the assimilated noon as a dogesh plus the comets. No changes there. No changes to the imperative with the hey, heric, noon assimilation, comets. Same with the infinitive construct. And then with the infinitive absolute, we're going to see either noon, heric, or hey, heric, plus noon assimilation plus comets. We should be able to recognize all of that. And then with the participle, we're just going to see noon heric. There's, there's really no 
changes to the to the uh, stem vowel. When it comes to the third hay uh, endings, here's what you can kind of count on. Perfect will end in comets plus a hay. Imperfect will end with segol plus a hay. Imperative will end with serre plus a hay. Infinitive construct will end with oath, holm vav tav. And the participle will end in segol hay. But these are only true when there's no suformative, no suffix. Now, first gutturals get a little wonky on the vowel pointings, but we still see our standard diagnostic markers of the NIFL dealing with a noon prefix and a A-class vowel stem vowel. So you can you can kind of bank on those to tell our NIFL perfect in first gutturals. With the imperfect, this is a little wonky because gutturals can't take a dog esh, right? So how do you know? How do you know you're dealing with nifal? Well, the hiric becomes a tsere. Here's how I like to think about it. I'm not saying this is what's happened. This is how I like to think about it. Kind of like a mnemonic device, okay? The noon assimilates into a dogesh, but the dogesh can't stick to a guttural, so it drops. It falls, Beep. and it lands next to the hiric, and the hiric moves over and makes room for it. So now we've got two dots underneath our prefix. And it became, instead of a hiric, it's a tere. So the, you can consider the dogesh, it's there, it's in the tere, right? But then under our verbal root, the first consonant we have, comets. So the imperative follows suit. We'll have the hey, sere, plus the comets. The infinitive construct follows suit. Hey, sere, plus the comets. The infinitive absolute uses the noon, but instead of a hiric, it uses pathak. The other key indicator is we have the holm vav. And then the participle, it uses the noon, but then it uses a segel. And then, of course, we have our comets, stem vowel, and then the first guttural, it cannot take a shiva, so we have a hatef segel instead. Now, first noon weak verbs are funny because we're not going to have a noon noon, right, with the nifal. So the noon of the verbal root assimilates. And it assimilates into the second consonant of the verbal root. That makes room for the noon of the nifal diagnostic to come in. All right? So the noon that we see in the first noon weak verb nifal is the noon of the nifal not the noon of the verbal root. Then what happens is we still have the noon hiric, right, as our diagnostic marker, and we still have a A-class vowel, stem vowel, in the perfect. So this is why Nutsal, for example, doesn't have four consonants. It only has three. It's because the, the noon of the verbal root has assimilated, thus truncating the word and the presence of the pathak appears earlier, so to speak, in, in the word. And it's very consistent in the perfect, in the imperfect, we see the same technique as we saw earlier with the noon assimilation of the imperfect. But now, because that noon is assimilating, the noon of the verbal root stays. So in the imperfect, 
the assimilation is done with the noon prefix. In the perfect, the assimilation is done with the first noon in the verbal root. This explains why in the perfect, uh, there's only one noon, while in the um, imperfect, there's only one noon. And the difference is with the imperfect, it, it has a, another prefix, the imperfect prefix. So there you have it. The imperative follows suit just as we've seen Herrick, Yod, Noon Assimilation, Comets. The infinitive construct does the same thing. Infinitive absolute uh, looks the same. However, it can have two forms, one with the Herrick, Yod, plus Comets with Noon Assimilation. The other could be uh, the first type under the perfect, where we have the verbal root noon assimilate into the second verbal root consonant. So that one looks like a noon heric with a home vav stem vowel. And then the participle uses the same perfect style with the verbal root first noon assimilating into the second consonant. So we add the noon heric and then we end up with a comet stem vowel. Now with first yodes, these ones are different because first yodes were originally holom vavs. And then through the evolution of the language, they became yodes. But then when they're conjugated, they revert back to holom vav. So with first yodes, we will see a noon, but instead of a hyric, we'll get a holom vav in place of the yod. And then underneath the, well, the stem vowel will be a pathek or a class vowel. That's the perfect conjugation. The imperfect will have our imperfect prefix plus a hyric. So the hyric is part of the diagnostics. We'll have a shirik, which is a vav with a dogesh, and then a comets. And that will be our consistent nifal diagnostics for the imperfect. The imperative will follow suit. Hyric yod plus a shirik plus a comets. Infinitive construct will also be hyric yod, shirik, comets. And so it's not actually a shirik. It's a dagesh forte on a vav. A shirik cannot take a comets. That's how you know it is a, a dagesh forte, which is a double vav. There is no infinitive absolute. It's simply not attested in, in a first yod verb. And then the participle is noon, holom vav, plus a comet. There are other forms of weak verbs, but I think you get the picture at this point. You understand your diagnostic markers. It's gonna help you be able to figure out what you're dealing with. Remember your job as a reader of the Hebrew Bible is not rote memorization. It's the ability to investigate, the ability to search, the ability to use your tools, ability to use your resources and figure it out. What I would recommend is take the summary where at uh, the end of each of these chapters, the diagnostic markers are kind of highlighted. Recreate that yourself and highlight it, highlight the diagnostic markers, be able to recognize them. Use colored pens, colored pencils, highlighters, markers, however you want to do it but color code it, study it, tear it apart, put it back together. Uh, you, you'll, I found that very helpful to do that myself. I'm recommending that you do it, but ultimately it's up to you. Study it however you want. You know what the diagnostic markers are. So now get out there and start practicing. 
Well, that's it for today. Today we covered the NIFAL stem. Next week we will cover PL. We'll see you then.